All right, so I'm excited to show you guys my new thumb here. This is from Bedrock Attachments. And this is a 70 millimeter main pin thumb. It's not a progressive link, but at least it's a main pin thumb, which that's what I wanted. And it's hydraulic, obviously. It looks to be very heavy duty. This is one inch AR steel. And it's very heavy. It's about a thousand pounds the way it sits right now. This is for a cat 315, 316, and 318. So this thumb will fit a machine that's much bigger than this because a 318 is, is quite a bit bigger than this because this is only a 130. So a 318 would be like a 180. For some reason, this machine takes a lot bigger pins than its class size, which I'm not unhappy about. It does make the attachments a little bit heavier for it and it makes them a little bit more expensive. But I am glad to see that the main pin on this is actually more stout than most of its brothers and sisters. I guess the brother to this would be like a Volvo EC140, but this is only a 130. And even the 140 I don't think takes a 70 millimeter pin. I think that takes a 65. So we do have one slight problem, and that is the fact that I kept going back and forth about putting a coupler on this machine. And when I ordered this, I told him I wasn't going to have it for a coupler. So here's kind of the story that goes with this. I've been in contact with this company for a while, and I've been going back and forth, and I didn't know whether I was going to get a coupler for this machine or not. So I'd got everything to order for the one with a coupler, and then I decided I wasn't going to get a coupler. And then right at the last minute, I got a coupler. So I got the order kind of ready for one with a coupler. And then at the last minute, I decided I didn't want a coupler and I, cause I couldn't really find one. Then all of a sudden I did find one. So they had already had it ready in the system for one without a coupler. And they actually sent it to me before I paid them for it. So it was actually kind of a mistake because they sent me the one for without a coupler. And then right after that, I got a coupler. So this is a thumb that's supposed to be without a coupler. So hopefully it'll work. Because if it doesn't, then I got to send it back and I got to get the one that's for a coupler, which I think it has more of an arch here, which makes sense because with the coupler on, you're going right here instead of right here. So you got this part to avoid. So you kind of need to curve over that. So I'm going to quickly fit this on here and just make sure it works. And I really have no idea if it is or not. I kind of looked at it quickly and it's probably a 50 50 shot of it working or not. So we'll see. So it did come with a pin, and I think this one's about 25 inches long, the same as the one that I have on there right now. So rather than use theirs, I'm gonna take that off just in case I need to send it back. I'll take that off and just use mine for now. I'll keep this for a backup if I do end up putting it on there. But they also give you shims with it and stuff, which may or may not be enough, I'm not sure. This machine is kind of an oddball, so it, it's not gonna be like super precise with everything. They give you shims to make it work, and if we need a few more, I can just buy a few more. kind of sucks it's hitting right there just like I thought it would because it's not meant to have a coupler on it so there's no point in getting upset about it I'll make something work I'll either send this one back and get another one or modify this one because honestly if the other one isn't longer then it won't really work anyways because this bucket is a little bit longer than it should be. So you can see, even if it did go down, I don't think it would even go in between the teeth. I think it would hit right here, which is not the end of the world, but it would be nice if it would hit 
with the teeth because it's supposed to mesh with the teeth. It makes a nice little precise point to pick up things with. If it's like this, it, it doesn't really, it's not that great. It'll still work for most of the stuff I do, like picking up logs, it'll be fine, but for picking up smaller stuff, it's going to be hard. So I got to check with the company. If the one with the coupler is longer, then I'll probably just send this one back. If not, I'm probably just going to have to modify this one. I don't know what else to do. The only other thing I could do is have another company build me one that's custom, but you know how that goes. That's going to be a lot of money. So let me call the company and see what they're going to do, and we'll get back to this. All right, so this is going to sound crazy, and I'm having a hard time accepting it myself, but I think this quick coupler's got to go. So let me show you what led me to this decision, which I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to do, but I'm pretty sure. So for some reason, I kept seeing all this slop. You guys remember I did all this work to this quick coupler. I did a lot of work to re-weld that and stuff. And, and I spent most of a day going to get it in like $600 or 650 or something. And I didn't even tell you guys, but I actually broke down with my pickup truck that day. And it was the coldest day of the year. It was like negative 10 degrees. And so my truck broke down on the side of the road and I was stranded for a while. And I actually had to get a tow truck, get it towed. And it turned out to be a fuel pump problem. And I got it fixed. And before I headed home, I ended up going back to get this quick coupler. I should have took the sign right there. Should have just turned around right there. But I kept going and I got the quick coupler. The guy was really nice. And it was really cheap, it was like 600 and something dollars for it. But anyways, back to the story. There's a few things that I discovered about this quick coupler that I don't like. So, this right here has a massive amount of play. And if you guys remember, I welded like almost a half inch bead on this part right here to take up the slop. Well, now it's got like three quarters of an inch of space. So I'm like, where did that space come from? Well, turns out that this pin that's in here is bent. It's bent like this. It's bent really bad. It doesn't really show up on camera that well, but it's bent like really bad. And this sleeve right here is actually starting to break. And it's bent as well. So I just discovered this right now. And I'm thinking maybe this quick coupler is just not meant to be. And so I have a two and three quarter inch pin, which is a 70 millimeter here. And then I have like an inch and a half pin here. And somehow that inch and a half pin is expected to put the same amount of force as that 70 millimeter pin. And I don't understand why that is. So there's really nothing I can do about that. Short of just some crazy invention that I come up with on here to keep that in place. I just don't see I just don't see the need to keep chasing down problems on this quick coupler. I think it's just more problems than it's worth. If I take this quick coupler off, it's like another 600 pounds of weight that I can shave off of everything here. Plus, it won't hit the cab anymore. You guys saw that the bucket can hit the cab now because of this quick coupler. It extends the bucket. So I absolutely hate the idea of abandoning this quick coupler since I have so much work into it and so much time and effort and just just a lot of stuff involved in it but I really think it's for the better that I just just call it quits with this thing I think for the amount of time that it will save me it's not worth it I think this machine is just not meant to change buckets that often and if I do I can just change it the old-fashioned way just take the pins out I had all kinds of big plans for this machine but here's the other part of the equation too I'm looking at getting a mid-size excavator and that one, I will not accept anything less than a quick coupler, hydraulic quick coupler, and a thumb, main pin thumb, and maybe even a progressive main pin thumb on the mid-size excavator. Something like a 70 to 80, maybe even 90 size machine. I had all kinds of plans for this, getting a grading bucket and a ripper and maybe a hammer for it. But I can still do those things, it's just I need to spend more time taking on and off the attachment, that's all. So with that being said, by taking off that quick coupler, I can put this thumb back on. I measured it up and it'll just fit. It'll just be long enough to hit those teeth. 
not the teeth, but the cutting edge right here. It's just long enough. It doesn't go through them. It hits like right here. I'm good with that though. So the other part of the equation is the company that made this thumb doesn't have the one that I need in stock for the quick coupler version. So it's gonna be like almost two months for them to make it and send it. And with that being said, I looked at the diagram for it and I still don't think it's built in a way where it can avoid this part right here. They made it like a little bit longer here, but I still don't think that it's gonna avoid this. And I'm not gonna go through shipping this thing all the way back to them and then shipping another one all the way to me just to figure out two months from now that it still doesn't work. So with all that being said, I think it all comes down to the best decision I can make right now is just to get rid of this quick coupler. It's kind of like it's either the quick coupler or the thumb and I really want the thumb. So let's see if we can get this pin out so that we can get this quick coupler undone and get this thing out of here. Now, I don't know if I can get that out. I might have to like sawzall it out or something. I'm not sure. I actually think it was bent more than that, but driving it out kind of straightened it a little bit. But you can see that's pretty bad, even if I didn't bend it back. right back. Just push the thumb over a little bit. Hold on, hold no, on. no, no, hold on. no. Hold on. No. Hold on. no. Good. It isn't too far, right? Yeah, you're good.
Okay, so it's been a few weeks since I've been working on this. I had to order a bunch of parts. So let me show you where I'm at here. This is the cylinder that they sent me. It's too long. It reaches too far up into the armpit. Right up in here. And then when you fold the stick in, it hits. And if you slide it down, then when it's in this position, it'll extend too far and then the rod will hit here. So I can't slide it down, it's gotta stay up. It would be okay if it was the opposite, if the cylinder was too far up and then when the thumb got in the most upper position, if it still had some rod left in the cylinder, that would be fine. But the opposite is not good because then you'll just hit the rod right here. You'll just destroy it. I don't know why this cylinder is so long. It's only got like 31 inches of extension. So I think the cylinder only goes to here and then the rest of this is empty or something. I don't know because because the rod only retracts out like 31 inches. But this cylinder all together is like 18 inches longer than it needs to be. So I got another cylinder here. And this is the same bore cylinder, it's four inches. It's got the same size rod, which is two inches. But this one extends 36 inches, which is a longer extension than that one, but yet it's like 18 inches shorter. So this will easily fit on the stick and I won't have to worry about it pushing down too far or going up too far and then being in the armpit there. I can't blame the company that made this because a Cat 315 would probably work fine with that cylinder. Maybe it's got a longer dipper. I don't know. But I'm assuming that that's what it is. So it's not really their fault. They made this for a Cat 315 and this is not a Cat 315. So it is what it is. I got to make it work. So I ordered a whole bunch of parts and this is one of the parts that I ordered but I also ordered a whole bunch of different fittings for the hydraulics to get that working because this is only one way hydraulics on here this is so it's only got flow going one way so you guys might learn a bunch of things about this because I had to do a lot of research to figure this out I've never done this before but I've seen a lot of people with excavators that only have a one-way flow set up for the auxiliary and they could probably benefit from doing the same thing I just meticulously went through and each part of the hydraulics that needed a fitting I just figured out exactly what I needed and I ordered it all off of one website and got it all at once and I got all that in the only thing I'm waiting on is pins for the cylinder here so the one thing that I'm really not happy about but I couldn't see any other way around it was the fact that that cylinder over there has two inch pins it has two inch bores anyways and then it came with two inch pins and I could not find a cylinder with a four inch bore that had a two inch rod and a two inch pin set up or a two inch bore in here. The only thing I could find is inch and a half. Every single place that I looked at only had inch and a half. I searched so many websites to find out if I could just get one with a two inch pin bore and they just don't exist. So that's really unfortunate because inch and a half I don't think is big enough but at the same time why would they make all these cylinders with only inch and a half if the cylinder was too much for inch and a half. So if you look at it in that sense I guess it should be fine. The problem is I gotta adapt it. So this piece here goes up on the stick up on the top to hold it and this is actually an inch and a half pin this is from the quick coupler. So you can see it's that's the size of the pin and then they have a two inch bore on this piece here. So I'm going to have to adapt down to inch and a half. I'm going to bush this out to inch and a half and then the other side where it goes into the thumb, I'm also going to have to do some stuff there. There's a couple different approaches but I should be getting those parts later today so that's why I'm finally getting going back on this project. And so for right now, while I'm waiting, I need to get this whole assembly off. This thing probably weighs 300 pounds. But there's a lot of welds on it. It's welded all the way up here, all the way down here. Same thing over here, and then all the way up top there. So there's like, 
uh, eight feet of weld there that I got to somehow take off. Luckily, they didn't weld in here like they were supposed to, but it's still a lot of welds that I got to gouge out of here. So that's my mission for the next few hours. And then hopefully later today, we'll get the rest of my pieces here and we'll put this all back together. So that wasn't exactly easy, but it wasn't the hardest thing I've ever done. According to this GoPro, it's 48 minutes. That's how long it took to gouge that out. That's a lot of weld there though. There's thick welds too. And that's thick steel right there, that's three quarter. trick is you keep cutting it all the way around and then you bang it a few times and then a crack forms and wherever that crack stops that's where you know you didn't get good enough so then you just get that area and then it cracks and you beat it again and then it cracks more and then you just keep getting all the areas until you see a crack all the way around and then you just give it all you got with the sledgehammer and that's what happened the crack is easy to see too it's like almost a sixteenth of an inch and then you just keep going around until there's a crack all the way around and then you that doesn't look like much but that's probably 300 pounds of steel right there
So according to my measurements, this is approximately where this should be. So I'm gonna grind that down a little bit better. Just mark it out. So that's just tack welded on there. I don't want to go any further than that until I know everything works, everything's fitted up properly. So I thought the FedEx truck would have been here by now with my pins and bushings, but I guess they have a few more hours before it's the end of the day. So I'm sure we'll see them sometime, but I don't want to waste any time. I want to keep going on the hydraulic end of this whole project. So let me kind of explain what's going on. Like I said before, this excavator was set up for a hammer, so it's only got one way flow on it. So this line right here goes right back to the tank. That's kind of like a non-pressurized line. So if you follow that back, this line right here goes all the way up and around and right back into the tank. So that's the return. So that never sees any pressure. This is actually the valve right here that controls the auxiliary hydraulics one way. There's a few different ways you could do this. I guess you could try to find the right valve and put it back on here, one that was two way. But I just figured right off the bat I wasn't going to have any luck with that. So both this valve and this valve are part of this whole assembly. And it's a lot of stuff going on, but it's only a one way valve. So this is a pilot line coming in. And that goes into underneath the cab. And in the cab, there's a button on the right joystick. And if you press that, you can see this other hose flex. This one right here. So this is the pressure side. And this goes up and around. And on the other side of the boom there, or actually the stick, there's another quick coupler over there. And you could see that whole line flex every time you press that button and you can hear the pump straining itself because it's just dead ending itself. There's nothing on it right now. So they make a few different valves that you could use for this. And I'm not the most versed on hydraulic valves and stuff. So I don't know if this is exactly the best option, but it'll work and it's not crazy expensive. So basically I got this valve and I need to mount it somewhere here. And it turns a one-way valve into a two-way valve. So basically, we would come out of this valve right here. This is the pressure line. And I think I'm going to mount it right here. So we're going to go right into it with this, which I'm going to get a new hose made up for that. It's really short. It's going to go into that valve here. There's going to be another 
line that goes out from here to the tank and then there's going to be another line and then there, and then there will be two lines coming off of there that connects all the way down to where the thumb's going to be which i have a steel line here and a steel line here so all we need to do is connect it from there to there and there so i'll have to get all new hoses made up and these are pretty thick these are three quarter inch hose so this is the valve that i got this is from summit hydraulics and this one is meant for 24 volts because this machine is 24 volts. So it's a directional electronic valve. And basically this mounts onto this block right here. Like that. And then this is the pressure side coming out of that valve that you saw. This is the tank side that just returns right to the tank. There's no pressure on that one. And then it's got... And then it's got B for one way of the flow. And A for the other side of the flow. So the pressure comes in here, and goes out here, and goes out here, depending on which way this is going. Which this is controlled electronically. So to control this whole assembly, there's these little electronic ports here, and I got a joystick controller. So this is what will control the thumb in and out. Unfortunately, it's not proportional. And I probably could get all fancy and make it proportional somehow. But I just don't think it's really necessary. I'm actually hoping that the flow will be kind of slow in it. So that it doesn't move like really fast when you press the button. That way you can kind of adjust the thumb without going crazy trying to go back and forth. You know, obviously this is not the most ideal situation altogether but to add a thumb to this machine this is one of the cheapest ways to do it so this gets mounted onto the old joystick there and i'm gonna try to find a way to make it work where this doesn't extend the joystick i'll probably have to chop off some of the joystick and then stick it on there so i gotta mess around with the electronics because in order for this whole thing to work there is the button on top of the joystick that's currently on there right now. That has to be activated for this whole thing to even work. So every time you activate the thumb, I have to press that button first on the joystick and then use this to go back and forth. So I'm hoping that I can wire it up in a way where each time I press one of these buttons, it also activates that button on the top. So I'll have to rewire some things hopefully that'll work if not i'll have to put another button on there maybe a, a button on the back here so that you press this button and then press these buttons but we'll get into that in a little while the first thing i need to do is figure out how to mount this somewhere because it's it's very heavy actually it's pretty substantial piece of steel here uh, i believe that's aluminum but this part here is steel and it's very heavy yeah that's aluminum that's really light but all together, this is probably, I don't know, 50 or 60 pounds. So I gotta mount it somewhere where it's not gonna like be thrown all over the place. And also there's gonna be some really heavy duty hoses going to it, as well as a bunch more fittings. And when you activate the lines, I'm sure they're gonna be like jolting around and stuff. So I need to mount this somewhere that's very substantial, that's not gonna be hindered by everything jostling around and they give you two mounting holes to mount it which i'm glad to see that that's a pretty substantial size hole there i think you could put a at least a 3 8 if not a 7 16 bolt in there but we need to come up with a way where i can make some sort of bracket to hold this on first now summit hydraulics makes two different versions of this there's this one, and then there's a smaller one. This one is rated for up to 25 gallons a minute, which I probably don't need. The other one, I don't know what that's rated for, but it's, I think it's 15 gallons a minute, and I probably would have been fine with that one. 
but I just figured more wouldn't hurt. And a lot of times these are meant for tractors where you put this on the loader arm and basically it converts the flow from either like the bucket curl to auxiliary hydraulics or, or something else on there converts to other hydraulics. So normally you wouldn't see this mounted the way I'm going to mount it, which is back next to the cab. But I don't see any problem with that. This whole valve I think was like $260. So it's not crazy expensive. I think it was another $100 to get the joystick. Somewhere's in that range. And then I got also an extension for all the wires because I wasn't sure how much I needed. And so I think altogether I got like $400 if I remember correctly, into this part of it. So I guess to make this easy, I can take this and mount it somewheres first, and then I'll mount this onto it. So I'm going back and forth about this. There's not really a great way to mount this that works for everything. So this is the A port, this is the B port. I'm kind of liking that because one can go that way, the other one can have a 90 and then go that way. And then the tank for T, that can have a 90 and go off there but the problem with that is it leaves the power side here and i need to get from right there which is not like the end of the world if i had it like this then i guess this hose would need to come up and around like this like i said it's not the end of the world it's, i'd almost rather have a little bit more of a loop than to have something go directly over because then this hose is going to be so stiff that being straight but not quite straight is almost worse than having a loop on it. So if I mount it like this, then the valve that's on the top is going to be like this lengthwise, which I thought this whole time I was going to have it like this, but maybe it makes more sense to have it like this. And also I thought I was going to mount it right here but looking at it there's nothing holding up this bar right here it just sort of uses the strength of these steel lines here to hold it up i thought maybe i could drill a hole here come up with some angle iron and then mount it on the top here but all this is held up by just these steel lines so i don't know about that I could mount it somewhere over here, but that would probably be a lot of work to disassemble everything, weld it onto the boom, and then reassemble everything. I do have this bracket right here, which I could come up a ways and do something with that, but it would have to clear the boom, because I'm pretty sure the boom comes back way back here if you bring it all the way up. Let me just test that out real quick. So I could mount it there because the boom only goes to about here so I could do something over here but I'm thinking that's too short of a distance to then go to these steel lines here because you need a bit of distance for it to flex you don't want to be right next to where it's going to flex so I'm thinking I gotta think about somewhere's back here there's really just not a lot of options as far as mounting to things I kind of want to be centered because I'm going to have the two lines going this way that need a loop in them right there. So I don't want it like off to one side because those hoses are always going to move. It really is a good option to put it right here, but I just don't know. It's really solid, but 
just don't know if that's a good idea to add a whole bunch of weight onto there. It's going to put more strain on these steel lines here. Everything else around this area is just hoses and valves. And then there's my swing motor right there. There's nothing really to mount to though. I think really one of the best options is to take out these bolts here and then make a little piece of angle iron or something and then mount it to this. The biggest problem is that this is like a door that goes on top of it, which I need to oil up, but I might have to do away with this door. I don't see it really serving a whole lot of purpose. I think I got an idea. I think what I'm gonna do is come off of this with a piece of angle iron that shoots this way, just enough to be out of the way of this door. And then it'll like sit right here on top of everything. So I guess the first thing I need to do is take this line and rotate it down as much as I can. It almost needs to be underneath this line, which it can do because it goes over here. So to swivel it down, Underneath of here, it's got plenty of loop in it right now, and it's small and flexible. Wow, I'm really surprised that didn't have any fluid coming out. Now, it's so much nicer. Now I got room here to do something. So I'm thinking I should just get this line taken off here. That's the one that goes to the tank. This is British Standard Pipe Parallel Threads, which means it's not tapered threads. And I have caps and plugs for this. So I think I'll take it off here, put a cap on that, take it off there, put a cap on that, just to get this out of the way. So that gets this hose out of here. So I'm thinking if I came off with, let's see here. This door. Yeah, I mean the shorter the better, because the less leverage it has, which means less stress on that part over there. I'm thinking like a foot, a foot long would do. 
I got this piece of angle iron here. This is quarter inch. And it's, uh, I think it's four by four. That saw cut through this faster than you would cut a 2x4. So I could either do it like that, or I guess I could do it like this. But I think that leaves it too low, plus this wall will be in the way, so I think I like it like this. I could get fancy and take these bolts out and go through, but there's like a little bit of a recess right there so I'm not gonna bother I could put a shim in there but I don't think it's gonna add really too much strength I think having these bolts about three inches apart I think that's good So I got a drill press, but I think it's just easier and quicker to do it like this, use the mag drill on it. Okay, so I'm liking that, but these bolts are just a little bit too short, so I'm probably gonna have to get the next size up. And that might actually be a little bit too long, so I might have to washer it down. And the reason it's too long is because this valve body here is cast iron. You can't be going into it, so it's gotta be a pretty precise size there. So I'm sure the next size up is like a half inch longer, which is too long. So I'll have to washer it down with some thick washers, get it just perfect. But I'm gonna paint this up in the meantime. 
and these holes here didn't work they were like an eighth inch off so I just rather than try to like oblong them I just went over here and, and did new holes here so this should work good I think what I'm gonna do is just put a slice here because it's pretty close to that pipe there it's like it's like almost a quarter inch away but it's just not necessary to have that right there just slice it down there so I'll have to weld a piece of plate on the top of this angle iron to span that so I can put the holes in it so even if I did it like this the holes for this would be so close to the edge that this one wouldn't work because that's that leg of the angle iron so the bolts not gonna fit on the back side of that so I'm gonna grind this down clean it up to bare metal paint it and then I'll head to the store while it's drying and get those bolts and then we'll meet back here and assemble it so this is that bracket after welding that square piece on and then painting it and then cutting that angle in it So to mount this block on, I got these special kind of bolts here with the Allen key head. Lock nuts on the other side. So this valve assembly has got O-rings here. You can see how they're kind of in a point. And you can see how these are in a point, except for that one hole it's missing. That's probably for some different application. Just make sure it's nice and clean. Mount it on there. The door misses it. So in the instructions, they tell you only two foot-pounds for these four bolts right here. But the problem is, I don't have any sockets that go on a ratchet that are long enough to go in here. So, I don't know, I'm gonna, so there's not much leverage on that little part right there. So I'm just going to tighten it up as much as I can by hand. That should be about two foot-pounds. That's really low, though. But that's what they say. I think that's good enough. It's pretty solid. So like I said earlier, most of these hoses are BSPP, British Standard Pipe Parallel Thread. That's what this one is right here. And then, of course, you got these flange connections here. But for the purposes of this thumb or the auxiliary hydraulics, that's a BSPP. So in order for me to get from there, which is an SAE O-ring boss, I need an adapter. So I got one. So it seals up this end with the O-ring. And then on this end, you can see it's got like a reverse cone for the BSPP. So since I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to arrange this when I ordered this stuff, I got all straight fittings instead of coming out with a 90 because, because this one needs to go around 
end to here. So I figured I could either make a long loop around and keep it straight, or I could come around here and put a 90 on the hose itself instead of putting a 90 here. I also figured that putting a 90 on this whole contraption while it's in place is going to be hard. I'd have to take that off. So again, it was just easier to put a 90 on the hose itself. So all these fittings are straight fittings. Alright, so like I mentioned earlier, there's a button on the top here that you have to press to enable the one-way hydraulics. Here's the new switches of the handle that I need to put on. One button does one way for the flow, the other button does the other way. But I also need to turn on the one-way valve first, or at the same time, simultaneously, at the same time I'm turning on these. So, at first I thought, oh, this is easy, because, like, here's the incoming power, the red, and the red over here and then when you hit this switch it brings power to this black lead here or on the other side it's the white lead so you're basically switching these two so I thought that's easy because I'll just tie into both of these with the lead that goes to this so that when I'm giving power to that black lead there it also gives power to the lead here that needs 24 volts to activate that other valve so that it happens at the same time. The one thing I didn't think about was the fact that if I hook this wire up to that lead and then I hook this wire up to the lead, if I press this button, it's gonna give power and back feed through the valve and back through the other wire and then it's gonna also give power to this white lead. It's going to back feed, which is not good because then both of these will be on at the same time. So there's one of two ways I can do this. I can either just throw another switch on the back and just like tape it on there and like hit that switch at the same time that I'm hitting the top switches left or right. Or I can put a one way diode on both of these and then that way it won't back feed. The problem is. I have to order those. As far as I can see, I can't find them locally, the one-way diodes. And ordering it is going to be like another half a week or up to a week. So, and I want to get this going like right now. I've been ordering stuff and just waiting and waiting and waiting. I just want to get this done. 
So I think for right now, I'm going to run to the auto parts store and just get a switch that I put on the back and I'll order one of those diodes. That way I can get it going for now and then I can always rewire it with the diodes in it to make it a little bit more convenient. But at least I can go to the store right now and get something so I can get this going right now. But I need to take this apart a little bit more and what I'll do is just cut the leads going into here and then I'll drop them down so that when I go to rewire it, I can just open up this and rewire it in here and then I can just take that switch off later. So I guess this piece is what holds this boot up. It wraps around this. So I'm thinking if I cut that, and then it's got a set screw, just set it right there. And then directly above where I cut can be where I go with this. And then that way the boot will stay up like it's supposed to. And this will kind of ride at the right height. It looks like it might be like an inch or maybe two inches above the other one which I guess I could cut this down it's not really doing anything here I could cut this down so that it's the same height as the other joystick I guess if I'm gonna go this far and make it nice I'm I'll just do that They give you these little sleeves so that you can have different adjustments for the stick. Yeah, I go fetch it, but not right now. But I bet you I could drill that through there, but it just means cutting the other end to do it. But it's about the same height as the other one. It's not the same style, but it's not too bad. I could get used to that. So now they give you these two, I believe these are weatherproof connectors that go on top of the solenoid. But I need to get this inside the cab first. Rather than try to get this apart, which I'm not really sure how you get this apart, I'm going to take these two apart 
feed it through there from the other side and then I'll connect them again and then connect them in here. And then on the other end is this connector here, which gets connected right there. All right, so I got everything electrically hooked up right now, except for activating this valve right here. But I have this all wired in. I got power fed to the other end and ground. So all I gotta do is connect those clips in there and then hit the button and we should hear some noise here. So I'm gonna set you guys right here and let's see if you hear some noise. sounds and looks like it's working to me. So I think the next thing I need to do is get some hoses made up for this. So I think I'm going to use this hose already because it's still good. So that gives this whole solenoid pressure. I think the reason it stands for power is because that's supposed to connect to your power takeoff if you're on a tractor. Because a lot of people would use this for a tractor. So you have a power takeoff, which is like the end of the valve, 
and you and then you connect it to here. So then this is the A port and this is the B port. So that's the in and out of the thumb. And then the other side is the tank. So we can at least utilize this hose for now. I'll get a short one made up with a 90 to go from here to the tank. And then I gotta get two made up for here to go to here. Cause the one hose I took out of here was all busted up. So I don't wanna use that again. I'll get a new one. Also, I changed my mind about bushing down to an inch and a half pin like that cylinder has. Same thing here, bushing down. I talked about that before. What I did instead is I brought the cylinder to a machine shop and I had some DOM pipe stop, which is drawn over mandrel. And it was um, two inch ID and then um, three inch OD. So it was half inch wall. I had just enough of it so that he could make the eyelets weld them on. And then that way I don't have to modify this thumb at all. I don't have to modify that. I just put it in there. So he's cutting off the old eyelets, welding on the new ones. And while I could have done that myself, the problem I had was the DOM pipe didn't have the right inside diameter. It needed to be machined down a few thousands. And I tried to use a hone, like a brake hone, to try to enlarge it, but it just wasn't working. So he needs to put it on the lathe. He needs to turn down the inside just a few thousands so that the pin will actually fit inside of it because they were the same dimension. So there was no room for any kind of wiggle room for grease or anything like that. So I should have that back in a few days. Then it's easy. I don't have to modify this. I just slip the pin in, slip the pin in. And then we got to worry about this hydraulics hooking it up to it. But I should have all the fittings I need for that. So in the meantime, I'm going to go get some hoses and I'll meet you back here. All right, so I got all the hoses that I need. Hopefully, hopefully everything is right. I spent a small fortune on these hoses. This was like $1,200 for all these hoses. So let's hope all of them are right. So the first one I'm gonna put on is gonna be the one that I have the most probability of being wrong. So we'll get that on first to make sure it's all right. Whenever you have a hose that has two 90s on them, you have to clock it right. So in other words, this one has to be in the right rotation compared to the other one. When you have a 90 and a straight, it's not so important. And then of course, when you have a straight to straight, that's not important either because everything can swivel. This part of it doesn't swivel. So let's hope this is right. This is gonna go from this valve, the existing valve here, it's gonna loop up and have a 90 and go into here. I was originally gonna use this hose but we're gonna use that for somewhere else. So let's get this one on first. And I learned a small lesson about hydraulics in general. I was using BSPP, British Standard Pipe Parallel Thread, because that was what was on here. I didn't realize that that was a much more expensive setup for all the fittings than to use something like JIC or, or ORB, which is uh, O-Ring Boss. Those are American fittings, so they're a lot cheaper. So rather than go from the ORB to the BSPP right here. I'm going to take these out and basically what I did is I went from JIC to the BSPP with an adapter because this JIC 90 was a lot cheaper than it was for the BSPP. So we just converted it with an adapter. So there's a few more spots that need to be adapted but I got all the adapters. If I had known about that, I would have just done that right from the beginning and just planned on using JIC. And I don't know what these kind of hoses are called, but I think this would have been a lot cheaper too. I think that's even cheaper than JIC to use that. So I probably should have done something with that, but I figured that's a huge bulky fitting to go on this valve. I don't know if I could have made that feasible or not. Probably would have had to put a spacer underneath this block to make it work or something. But anyways, this looks like it's gonna work. So let's put that in. So we're actually going to take this fitting off. So we're not going to need this. So now we're going from ORB to JIC.
All right, so that's not too bad. It could have been clocked like maybe five degrees different than it was, but there was enough of a loop that I could twist it just a little bit and it's fine. So now this hose here, which I was originally gonna loop up around to here, now I can just take this one and put it right here. That is for one of the sides of the thumb. And that's already on over there where it needs to be. So it just needs to go right here. Easy. And that's already BSPP. So I'll leave that adapter on there. Just take that plug out and that's it. So the next hardest one is gonna be the return to the tank, which is off the back here. That one kind of needed to be exactly the right length because there's not really a good way to leave a loop because there's not enough space to leave a loop. There's just this small little hose right here. Let's just look at this before we put it in. Looks like, looks like it's a little bit too long, maybe two inches too long. Hopefully we can just make a little, little bit of a loop in it. All right, so I'm gonna have to unmount this block in order to get this in here because I gotta be able to spin it around. Okay. Well, I guess I gotta take this off too. See if we can just pull this thing off. Yeah, that'll work. So the idea with this one is that you can get it to the closest 360 and then you tighten down this nut, which tightens down that O-ring. All right, so that's not too bad. All right, so that's not the best, but it's also not the worst thing that's ever happened. Just had to come up a few degrees here, which left just a little bit of loop here, and it's a very sturdy, stout hose, so it's not easy to bend it, but that works. 
So those are all the hard ones. Now it's just easy from here. Now I just gotta put one going from here to here, which needs a loop on the bottom. All right, so that's all plumbed up. Everything has got a nice loop in it. That way nothing gets kinked when the boom moves. So there's these two little ports that I believe are a test port to test your pressure. So I got a little quarter inch ORB plug here. So now the only problem is, I didn't realize that there was one on the other side too. I thought the one I was looking at was just on one side. So I don't have one of those small quarter inch ORB plugs to go on the other side. I'm hoping that it is a test port because I actually got eight feet of quarter inch hose. This is to put a gauge on so I can test out the pressure to turn down the pressure if I need to. So maybe I can adapt to that port because on the other end, I planned on adapting to that port. So I got all these different fittings. I got this fitting to go onto a spare quick coupler in case that's not a port. I'm gonna put this on a quick coupler so I can just hook it up to the system and test the pressure. But I was hoping that I could use this test port in which case I would just be using this piece right here to hook right up to it and for now I guess what I can do is if that does work as a test port I'll just keep this gauge hooked up until I get another plug and then I can eliminate all these but for right now I think everything here is done so now we can worry about the cylinder over there getting that hooked up to quick couplers getting a test port somehow and I'm still waiting on that cylinder, but I just gave it to him yesterday, so I don't know if I'm gonna get it back today, tomorrow, or the next day. We'll just try to get as much as we can hooked up in the meantime. So the last big hose I need to replace is this one right here, because it's all frayed. It's not leaking, but it's frayed because the way it was routed before, it would get kinked underneath the armpit here. Every time you 
would bend the stick, it would like create this scissor action on it. It was just at the wrong angle. It was hooked to this piece right here. So we gotta reroute that a little bit. And I'll keep this around for a spare because it doesn't leak yet. Believe it or not, this hose right here with these fittings is almost $300. So I got this one and I got the one that I took off over here that's also damaged. But neither one of them are leaking. I can use them as a spare hose since, like I said, they're $300 a piece. There's $600 worth of hoses that still work, but they just don't have um, probably the longest life expectancy. So since I know fluid's gonna come out of this one, when I take it out, I wanna do the least amount of action. So what I'll do is put a plug on this one to start with. That way it's already plugged up. That way when I switch them, I'm only doing one action so that it's less downtime for it to leak. These plugs are great, caps and plugs. I got all kinds of kits and they've really come in handy. Okay, so this steel pipe here needs to connect to this hose and this has got like a shut off on it so if you're using a hammer you can shut one side off i don't really see the need for that but might as well put it back on anyways So the end of this steel pipe had a 90, which doesn't really work well with what I'm trying to do here. So I just eliminated the pipe, went right into this shutoff here. And we're just gonna have to make sure that this is gonna be the one that controls the top of the cylinder, which it really doesn't matter which one does that because if I wanna flip flop them around, all I gotta do is switch the electronics over there. All I gotta do is switch the electronic plug on top of that valve just flip flop them and then so it, it doesn't even matter but it wouldn't matter anyways because I'm only going left and right with the joystick left and right button so I don't really care which one goes which way it's not like it's a top and bottom button so whatever it is it is this is this will just control the down function for the cylinder for the thumb so I guess really the only thing I need to do is somehow mount this on here which I just have to get creative just to mount that onto there, just so it's not going all over the place. And then this goes into the cylinder, and that goes right there, and then that's it. But I don't wanna put this into there until I got the cylinder, because otherwise I'm gonna be leaking fluid. I guess I could shut it off right here, but I'm not really ahead by putting that in. It's two minutes worth of work, so we'll just wait for the cylinder. And then this is, uh, ring boss that goes into the cylinder converted to a JIC and this is only half inch line but that's because the cylinder is only half inch and I'm not unhappy about that because by reducing the size we're gonna reduce the flow and I would like to reduce the flow because I'm almost 100% sure that the flow is gonna be too much with this three-quarter inch hose and the thumb is just gonna go crazy every time you hit the button it's going pew! And I'd rather it go slower. So I'm definitely not unhappy about the half inch. And I actually planned it like that from the beginning because the cylinder already had half inch. 
So I, what I wanted to do is make sure that I had three quarters going up to this point, which there's gonna be a quick coupler here. So this quick coupler will go like this. And then that way, if I ever decide to put something like a hammer or something else that needs a lot more flow, well, my flow is three quarters right up to this quick coupler. So the only thing that's not three quarters is the other side of the quick coupler, which is attached to the cylinder. That'll be half inch just for that cylinder. So in the odd chance that I need to run a hammer in the future or something, I'll still have three quarter going right up to the quick coupler. A few of my viewers recommended that I use this for anything to do with air or hydraulics for thread sealing. So since this is a tapered pipe threading, NPT, I'm gonna use this for all these connections. And it seems to be working really good so far. All right, so for right now, I'll probably just zip tie that right to here. That works pretty good. There's a quick coupler. This is just gonna be the half inch hose looping around here onto the cylinder right here. So this side is all set up 100%, except for that zip tie. This side over here is a little bit easier because I don't need to replace the hose. That's fine. And I don't need to replace anything on here except for the very end. This is just a little bit bigger of a quick coupler. I was gonna get the flat face quick couplers, but they were like $160 a piece. And I need four of them. Plus, I wanted one extra one for testing the pressure. So that's a lot of money in quick couplers. The ones that I got that I put on the other side here, which if you compare it, it's like the next size down. These were like $40 a piece. So that's much more reasonable. And I was able to get an extra one for testing the pressure too. So I just need to rotate this 90 degrees that way because it's got like a 45 on it. And then I'll put a quick coupler on it. So male quick coupler on this end, female quick coupler on this end. So I got another female that goes onto the cylinder, another male that goes on the cylinder, and then I got two extra ones for testing. 
which really we only need one because there's only one relief valve for this whole setup. So as long as we're good with the pressure going one way with the thumb, then we're good also with going the other way. It is really important to test the pressure too because all the hose that I got is only rated for 3000 PSI. And I think this machine is rated for like 3500 PSI, but we don't want to be that high with the thumb. We want to be able to push the thumb with the bucket. So whatever the bucket is at, we want to be under that. So in theory, I could test the pressure right now, but since I don't know what the pressure on the bucket is, I guess there's really no use in doing that yet until I get the cylinder. So right now, I guess we're ready for that cylinder. That's the only thing I'm waiting on. Spin around like this, spin around. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Keep going. enough to do what I need I'm not going back with that.
so that looked like 22 2300 psi to me that seems like it's pretty good but i don't know what it is compared to the bucket i can't really find the specs on this machine i could rig up something to find out what the bucket is but an easy quick rule of thumb is that i should be able to push the thumb with the bucket so let's try that out So right now it's not able to push the thumb. So we know the bucket pressure is actually pretty low. So we'll adjust the relief valve accordingly. If that gauge did nothing else, at least it told me that I'm well under 3000 PSI, which is what the hoses are rated for. like a half a turn at a time. <whistles> All right, so back to inside the cab here. I got these diodes. I got these from eTrailer.com, but there's a lot of different places that make them. And this is maybe a little bit more high tech than you really need. But basically it's very self-explanatory. That's the incoming power, that's the outgoing power, and it doesn't let it go backwards. So I'm going to wire these in here and then I should be able to just do everything from these controls and not have to worry about anything else.
right, so after all this hard work, I think it was worth it. Everything works out the way I wanted it to. I had to do a lot to get there, but it's there now, so. I'm pretty happy with it. One thing I was really concerned about was how much it tucked into the stick. So I had to weld this three quarter plate here. And by doing that, it allowed me to not hit this fitting right here. Cause that fitting was hitting without putting this plate here. But you really kind of need a plate there anyways. You need like a wear plate. Cause otherwise you're just beating on a stick all the time. So they gave you a quarter inch plate and it might've worked, but it would have been really close. You can see how close that fitting is to this thumb right here. And three quarters of an inch is nice and comfortable. And I'm a half an inch away over there. But the two things I absolutely hate about hydraulic thumbs, number one is sometimes they don't tuck up all the way enough. Whereas like a manual thumb would tuck up more. But this one tucks up as much as I need it to. I don't need it to really tuck up anymore because the bucket can't even curl all the way to it right now. So I don't really see the point in having it tucked too much more up because the bucket comes up to like here. So it still leaves enough room for a heap of dirt. Like if you're putting it in a truck or something, a manual thumb would tuck up a little bit more and it would give you a little bit more of a chance to put a heap on that bucket. But I think it's good enough for a hydraulic thumb. I don't see any problems with that. Another thing that I always hate with thumbs is when they go in the upper position and they don't stay there and they droop down. I've tested this out all day today and I let it sit with the machine turned on and the machine turned off and both of them didn't make any difference. It did not droop at all. I actually had a piece of loose three quarter steel right here that I had tested out as a spacer and I just wedged it in there and I came back a few hours later and it was still so tight that I couldn't get it out. So it didn't move at all, like whatsoever. If it had even moved like a 16th, that piece of steel would have been loose and I would have been able to pull it out, but it didn't move at all, which is really nice. And when I was digging regular dirt with it, it wasn't clanking around all over the place. It's really nice and tight. I like this thumb a lot. The one thing I have to figure out, and maybe you guys can help me with this, the relief valve on that auxiliary port for what used to be a hammer doesn't seem to do anything when it's turned off. So I might need to, I think what I need to do is put an inline relief valve on something that's after that port because if this port is not turned on, it seems like the relief valve isn't working. As soon as you let go of the button for the thumb, it seems like that valve turns off and then the relief valve is like bypassed. Cause I turned the pressure way down and I could not get that bucket to push that thumb. So that tells me that that relief valve is being bypassed. The only time I could even get it close to pushing the thumb is if I was engaging the thumb, which meant that that valve was turned on. But otherwise, I think what it does is it shuts off inside of here. It shuts this thing off and just shuts the flow off, therefore bypassing the relief valve. So I need to be careful for right now. I mean, I did try it. I did try everything I could to put a lot of force on that and it didn't bend anything. It didn't seem like it was even close to bending anything. But you never really know. I guess moving forward, if the thumb is all the way extended down, that would probably be the weakest point. And maybe it could bend something at that point. So I need to be careful until I figure this out. Maybe you guys can help me. There's gotta be some sort of inline relief valve, which is unfortunate because I think what I would need is one for each direction at that point. Not just one relief valve, there's gonna be two. Maybe something that goes on the stick or maybe something that goes back here gets hooked up right here or something I don't know but I definitely don't want to bend that cylinder or the rod inside the cylinder anyways because I have like $500 for the cylinder and then another $400 for the machine work that was done to it so I didn't really show you guys that but that guy at the machine shop we welded on those eyelets and that's that DOM drawn over mandrel steel 
that I had and he put a grease fitting on both sides and at first I was asking him if he wanted to put a bushing in there but he, he thought that it wasn't necessary for a thumb which I kind of agree with I don't think it's really necessary as long as you keep it greased up that's got a pretty heavy duty wall even though it's mild steel the DOM is it's still got a half inch thick wall whereas the old eyelet on it was only a quarter inch so I think it'll hold up just fine I ended up turning the relief valve down a lot so it actually restricted the flow a lot in this and it made it a lot slower which I'm not unhappy with I'm gonna keep it like that for a little while just to play it safe but it's also nice because the button is either on or off there's no proportional valve to it so it's nice that it goes slower because you can feather it better it was going way too fast at first but overall I'm just really happy to have a thumb on this machine because I've had it for three or four years now and I've always wanted a thumb from the day that I got it and I, I always knew it would be a big deal so that's why I never really pursued it until now but I do have a few jobs coming up that I could use it for so I decided it was time to just bite the bullet and do it now I have a lot of money into this thumb if I added up everything all together I think I got like eight grand into it but it was worth it I mean eight grand for a machine like this you could easily charge two hundred dollars an hour so it won't take long to pay off that you figure one full week at 40 hours would pay for that which the jobs that I have coming up are more than that anyway so it's already paid for as soon as I start doing those jobs I'm curious to see if there was a better way that I could have done this this works for what I need but there might have been a different way I could have approached it so with that being said I did learn a lot of lessons and I also ended up with what I wanted in the end so I really wouldn't change anything but next time maybe there might be a better way one more thing I want to mention before I go I was actually gonna make this thumb myself I had plans to fabricate the thumb for a long time I was gonna use mild steel up until that point and then put AR steel right there and it was actually gonna be very similar to this except it wasn't gonna have this big plate on here it was just gonna have the two outside tines and then maybe these two inner ones but it was gonna be empty in between and that was after looking around for a while for a thumb but then I came across bedrock attachments and they really treated me right so I would recommend if you're in the market for any kind of attachments not just the thumb but they have all different kinds for skid steers excavators tractors they have all different kinds of attachments so if you're in need of an attachment check them out because they had a pretty quick turnaround time now like I said they didn't have the one in stock that was for the quick coupler but they had a lot of other stuff in stock so I wouldn't hesitate to use them and I'll leave a link in the description and don't let the problems that I have deter you from them because it wasn't their fault this was meant for a cat 315 and you know I have it on a Samsung 130 so even though the pin size is the same there's a lot of other things that aren't the same and that's why things didn't match up and the cylinder that they gave me was much heavier duty than this one I don't think it necessarily needed to be that heavy duty for this machine but you got to remember that this thumb is meant for up to what does it say cat 318 so that's a pretty big machine a cat 318 and I'm, I'm sure once you get up to that size machine that cylinder was probably necessary this is probably a little bit overkill for this machine and like I said I wasn't even looking for the one with the steel plate going across the center here I was just gonna make like a bar going across the center and so I could have shaved off a lot of weight by doing that but with operating this for a little while now I don't see any problems with the weight that it's at even with the quick coupler I think it wouldn't be a problem as far as tipping over or having a limited capacity or anything like that I'm gonna show a few more shots of this thing working in action I don't really have a lot of stuff going on that I could use a thumb for right here right now but I'm gonna find some stuff around here to just kind of play around with and in the meantime you guys will see this on some jobs coming up so I'll see you guys on those videos